they have received a note in the forum or a question uh, from the jurors. Uh, it was on my desk when I returned from lunch at two o'clock. Uh, it's written by or written by the foreperson, dated today, indicating on behalf of jury, uh, and it reads as follows: uh, If an immunized witness provides specific testimony that we believe would give enough evidence for a conviction, do we have to have corroborating evidence to that specific piece of testimony? Uh, referencing last paragraph on page 13, continuing to page 14 of the jury instructions. Uh, we'll have the note marked for identification. Uh, either side and both sides may examine uh, the question. Uh, does either side have any response? Uh, Commonwealth? We believe the answer should be no, and that's all that needs to be set back. Uh, defense? question is, if an immunized witness provides specific testimony that we believe would give enough evidence for a conviction, do we have to have corroborating evidence to that specific underlined piece of testimony? Uh, if you want to uh, take a look at it, feel free. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sad. I think the answer is clearly, clearly yes, Your Honor. Uh, Massachusetts law defendant cannot be convicted based solely on the testimony of an immunized witness, but rather corroboration of the witness's testimony uh, with respect to at least one essential element of the charge, crime, or crimes is essential. I would recommend, as opposed to a yes or no, is to uh, perhaps repeat this last, yeah, these last two sentences, the last sentence from 13, first sentence on. Well, I don't know that that is helpful to them. They have that in writing. They've indeed cited the page reference. It's clear they don't understand whether what what it is that that requires. Uh, I think there are two ways to deal with it. I, I agree with the Commonwealth that the direct answer is no, uh, where the question references corroboration to a specific piece of testimony. Uh, that is not what the case law requires. Case law requires, uh, or the case law interpreting the statutory requirement, is that there be corroboration to at least one element of the charged offense. Uh, it doesn't direct it to portions or pieces of testimony. Uh, but it may be helpful to the jury to give a little more uh, explanation as to this requirement. Uh, and I've taken a look at uh, one of the more recent cases on immunized testimony, that's Commonwealth versus Asmeron, A-S-M-E-R-O-N, at 70 Mass App 667. Uh, Uh, I've taken some of the quoted language that would uh, include the following, uh, that the requirement for corroboration is found in the statute authorizing a grant of immunity, General Laws, Chapter 233, Section 20I, provides no defendant in any criminal proceeding shall be convicted solely on the testimony of or the evidence produced by a person granted immunity, end quote. Uh, the purpose of this provision is to require support for the credibility of the immunized witness. That support may come as much in the form of corroboration of evidence of the commission of, of the crime 
as it does from proof that the defendant was a participant. Thus, it is required that there be some evidence in support of the testimony of the immunized witness on at least one element of proof essential to convict the defendant. The corroboration need not prove the commission of the crime. All that is necessary is that the evidence satisfies the jury that the, in the context of, of this quote, accomplice, but I take it's the witness, is telling the truth. Uh, so that's a little bit more expansive an explanation as to this immunity requirement taken from our case law uh, and the appeals court in Asmaron is quoting Commonwealth versus Dabrowski and Commonwealth versus Fernandez. So I'd be happy to give the more expansive instruction uh, that's okay. If that seems helpful. That, that, that will be agreeable to Mr. Hernandez. Your Honor, I think that's more than is necessary. I think Cobwell versus Dabrowski, D-E-B-R-O-S-K-Y at 363 Mass 718. I think it's clear from the context of that case that corroboration that is required is very minimal. But the fact of a death is, in fact, enough corroboration. Yeah. What? So the answer here should simply be no to the question. We, we simply don't see the harm in providing more information. The, the question as phrased uh, is somewhat difficult to understand uh, what precisely the jury means. It seems the, that in an abundance of caution, it would be wise to give the more fulsome uh, explanation so that the jury can understand what their obligations are with respect to dealing with uh, immunized witnesses. Perhaps to blend the both together would be to answer the question no and then to provide what other additional explanation the court seems well, to Well, that would make sense. What is the page from Amerson, Your Honor? I'm sorry? What is the pinpoint from Amerson? Uh, it's on page 671. Thank you. Uh, and what I have read uh, is lifted and quoted directly from uh, the discussion section of that case. I, All right. I, I think by preferencing with uh, no, it assumes too much about the question. Um, well, no, the question highlights the word specific. Uh, and I, I think uh, to the extent they're saying uh, must there be corroboration on a specific piece of testimony that we are crediting? Uh, the answer is no. It's whether there's anything corroborating at least one essential element of the crime charge. And, unless by specific yeah. piece of testimony they mean element. Uh, these are lay people, not, not trained yeah. in the argo of the law, which is why the better well, course has to be to give the general explanation yeah. of the jurors. All right, I'll, I'm going to give both. Uh, why don't we have our jurors come down? Are they lined up? Well, What's that? We will line them up. They're deliberating on. Bring them on down. Uh, it's Yeah, that's what I would plan. And then I will send uh, in writing what it is I'm going to read to them uh, to supplement uh, the written instructions.
Your Honor, is that the written instruction includes a compost and that would be changed. Okay. I've received what I believe to be a question uh, that you have submitted on behalf of the jury. It is dated today. I've reviewed it with counsel uh, and would be prepared to answer it. And the question reads, uh, if an immunized witness provides specific testimony that we believe would give enough evidence for a conviction, do we have to have corroborating evidence to that specific underlined? piece of testimony, uh, and then referencing uh, a portion of the instructions on page 13 and 14. Uh, is this a note on behalf of the jury? It is. All right. Uh, let me answer the question. I'm going to provide a direct answer and then a bit of an explanation to the extent it is helpful to you folks. Uh, in direct answer to the question, that is, do you need corroborating evidence to a specific piece of testimony? The direct answer is no. Now, what you need is corroboration to at least one element of the charge crime or crimes. Uh, now, let me explain uh, this concept of requiring corroboration. The requirement for corroboration is found in the statute authorizing a grant of immunity. General Laws, Chapter 233, Section 20I, provides no defendant in any criminal proceeding shall be convicted solely on the testimony of or the evidence produced by a person granted immunity, end quote. And the purpose of this provision is to require support for the credibility of the immunized witness. That support may come as much in the form of corroboration of evidence of the commission of the crime as it does from proof that the defendant was a participant. Thus, it is required that there be some evidence in support of the testimony of the immunized witness on at least one element of proof necessary or essential to convict the defendant. The corroboration need not prove the commission of the crime. All that is necessary 
is that the evidence satisfies the jury that the uh, witness is telling the truth. So that is the purpose for a corroboration requirement. And the instruction that I've just given you elaborating on this requirement, uh, I will send up in written form to supplement the other instructions. Please understand, this instruction does not replace anything. It adds to and should be considered with all of the other instructions that I've given you in this case. I hope that that answers the direct question and explains this requirement, and you may now resume your deliberations. I am going to buff up the written product that I gave you by putting a heading on it, changing the last uh, line from accomplice to witness. And I'll provide copies to both sides and send it up to the jurors. We're in recess.